Hi, my friends! Welcome to our channel and course English in 50 Lessons. You know, I am absolutely delighted to be here and share my knowledge with you. Really, it's such an incredible feeling. But first of all, I'd like to ask you not to be afraid of it. Actually, I don't buy it. There is nothing to be afraid of. You just need to get used to real English speech and conversation. Basically, we're on the way of doing it. Right. And if you need much more practice, we can make our app in a video format. If you're really interested in it, let us know about all this in the comments below. I think that it would be great. Meanwhile, I've just made up my mind to add some more information and give you an example of a C1 level. But before doing it, uh, please have a look at the previous levels. You know, it's extremely useful. If you're really serious about improving your English skills greatly, I mean, all these things together, grammar, vocabulary, listening, and so on. Right. So, you see an example of a C1 level. So, to be perfectly honest, that's the most pleasant feeling I've ever experienced. To put it another way, it's an unforgettable feeling when you do your best, working incredibly hard, and this hard work does pay off and bear fruit in the end. Yeah, it'll be mentioned um, in this presentation a little bit later, just um, keep track of it. Right, the question is, what makes you sound like an advanced English speaker? Really, what is so particular about this level? I mean, the level C1. Let's try to answer these questions looking at the following examples. Okay, you see, it was very good. Actually, it's a very basic sentence. It was a very good result. We see a more difficult structure here. So, not just very good, but a very good plus noun result. So, it's A1. Okay, it was an excellent result. You have to admit that most beginners know good and bad, but they don't really know the word excellent. And if you start using more advanced vocabulary, so it's about this level A2, because of excellent. It was an excellent result. Look, I have to say that it was a great achievement. We use, yeah, you know, this very interesting spoken expression. I have to say that. And we also have more advanced vocabulary. Not just a result, because result, you know, it's a very basic word. We have the word achievement, and not just a big achievement, but a great achievement. And so, this is this level, B1, because of these two things. I have to say that and a great achievement. But we aren't going to stop. All right, let's have a look at the next sentence. No doubt it was such a great achievement. And we see that it's B2. Mostly thanks to the first expression, no doubt. If you know different expressions like this one, and if you start using them in your speech, you will sound like an advanced English speaker, or close to it. And my main aim is to teach you these expressions and grammar structures. That's why I'm here. All right. So, the next word is undoubtedly. You see that this word is much more difficult, and uh, it's mostly typical of an advanced English speaker. Undoubtedly. Look. Undoubtedly, it was such a remarkable achievement. So, we replaced, no doubt, with the word undoubtedly. Really, this word is rather difficult. And we also replaced the word great with remarkable. Not just big, small, great, but remarkable achievement. You know, it's very important. If you want to sound like an advanced English speaker, you need to use more difficult adjectives, adverbs, and other words as well. Let me give you one more example. Undoubtedly, it was such an outstanding achievement. All right, we've already used this word undoubtedly. And, uh, you know, it's at least an upper intermediate level. But then, we demonstrated the knowledge of this expression. Not just a big achievement or a great achievement, but an outstanding achievement. And that's why our level became advanced. 
thanks to these two expressions. All right, you see, no doubt it was such a great achievement. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly it was such a remarkable achievement. Undoubtedly, it was such an outstanding achievement. Of course, you need to know these expressions. That's why we're here. And I also want to give you some very useful tips which can help you a lot on the way to fluency and accuracy in English. So, and the first tip is the following. You need, you see, to get rid of simple words such as like very, good, bad, important, and like. You need to start using different collocations or different expressions in English which native speakers normally use. All right, so you see the first sentence. It's very important. That's all right. So if you say it's very important, I can understand you pretty easily. It's very important. But if I hear it, I'll think, okay, so maybe this person is a beginner or maybe this person has an elementary level, but not more. To sound more advanced, you need to use more advanced vocabulary. For example, you can replace very with extremely. It's extremely important. And if you say so, it's extremely important, it will be a two. A two. Just because of this word extremely, it's extremely important. But we aren't going to stop. No way. We need to reach a strong advanced level in English. So we are trying to remember some collocations in English. And so, for example, you can use this one very interesting collocation. It's vitally important. Not just it's very important, but you replace very with other words like vitally important. Remember this collocation. If you say it's vitally important, so you know, definitely, it's an advanced level. And it doesn't matter that the sentence is very short. Just looking at this expression, I can understand. Really, you know English so well. Really, your English is perfect. Just because you know these expressions and collocations which this course contains. And really, it's amazing. It's vitally important. Yeah, and the first tip is that you need to get rid of simple words such as very, good, bad, important, like, and you need to start using collocations at once. It means immediately. It's very important. Yeah, forget about it. It's much better to say it's extremely important. If you really want to show that you know English really well. But if you want to sound like an advanced English speaker, use this one, vitally important. It's vitally important. It means that it's so, so important. It's, you know, it's a matter of life and death. It's vitally important. However, if you really want to have an advanced level of English, you need to try to build longer sentences. For example, finding a solution to such a complicated problem is vitally important. You can say it's vitally important, that's all right. But if you're really serious about having, you know, the level C1 and C2, try to build more difficult, I mean, longer sentences. Finding a solution, solution to such a complicated problem. So the word difficult is a very simple word. Try to find alternatives to simple words. For example, you can replace difficult with the word complicated. And you can replace very with the word vitally. So if you know how to do it, do it, just do it. Finding a solution to such a complicated problem is vitally important. Another possible structure is the following. It's of great importance. You know, I often hear it's important, it's important, it's important. But you can, you know, say it another way. 
it's of great importance. If you say it is of great importance, it's B1. B1. But you can also use the word vital here. It's of vital importance. It means that it's vitally important. And it becomes C1 automatically. It's of vital importance. You also need to use more difficult structures and expressions, especially in the beginning. For example, needless to say. Of course, you can say there is no need to say, but needless to say is a much more advanced structure. Needless to say, taking proper measures during the crisis is, for example, is, is what? For example, is vital important or is of vital importance? So you try to sound like an advanced English speaker, not just when it comes to vocabulary, but when it comes to grammar, when it comes to pronunciation, and when it comes to all parts of English. Needless to say, you see, so it's a very good spoken phrase. Then, taken, taken, it means when we take proper measures, not just good measures, but proper measures, during the crisis is, and then you use what we've just learned, is vitally important, or another possible alternative is yeah, is of vital importance. Needless to say, taking proper measures during the crisis is vitally important. Or is of vital importance. Yeah, you know, actually we talked uh, about um, some of these words and expressions in the previous level. So have a look, please, at levels B1 and B2. They're all extremely useful. You see, find a solution to such a complicated problem is vitally important. It's of great importance. It's of vital importance. Needless to say, Taking proper measures during the crisis is vitally important, is of vital importance. So you see, needless to say, it's an amazing phrase. Needless to say, instead of there is no need to. Taking the proper measures, instead of taking good measures. And you see, yeah, it's also a good when it comes to grammar. You see, taken, taken, not just when we take, but taken, gerund, it's called gerund in English. During the crisis is... And um, actually, I believe that is the most valuable part, vitally important. It's C1, C2, what important, or is of vital importance. That's great. All these phrases are really amazing. As I have already said, we need to get rid of such simple words as good, bad, like, very, and so on. The question is, what can we use instead of these words? Okay, let's have a look at all this. For example, you can say it's wonderful. If you say it's wonderful, I think it's uh, mostly about A2. It's wonderful, but not more. It's amazing. It's B1. The word amazing is more advanced. So, so many people know the word wonderful, but I believe that much fewer people know the word amazing. So that's why it's B1. However, we need to have a strong C1 level. We need to have a strong advanced level. What do we need to do to reach these levels C1 or C2? Let's try to strengthen our point with the word absolutely. Absolutely. Look, if we have a strong adjective, for example, just wonderful, amazing, we can make it sound stronger, you know, with the help of this word, absolutely. It's absolutely amazing. And if you say it, it'll be C1. You can also say it's absolutely wonderful, it's absolutely amazing. Or you can use a more advanced word, you know, even more advanced than amazing, magnificent. Magnificent means very impressive. It's absolutely magnificent. You can say, it's magnificent, it's okay, but it's magnificent, I think it's B2. But when you start using absolutely, so it turns out to be C1. It's absolutely magnificent, it's absolutely magnificent. Or, one more alternative, one more possible alternative, it's awesome, it's awesome. 
It means like it's wonderful. You know, the difference is that the word wonderful is um, quite simple. So these words, I mean the words amazing, magnificent, awesome. So they are more advanced. So it's awesome, it's bitu. But if you really want to sound like a native speaker, like an educated native speaker, you need to use different words which go together pretty well, not just awesome, but one more word before yeah, this word, like it's truly awesome. It's truly not just it's absolutely, but it's truly. It's really awesome. Like it's really, but really, you know, it's just um, a very simple word. It's really awesome. And it's Siwan. Or, or it's truly magnificent. It's Siwan. Okay. So what's the problem, my friend? Start using these absolutely magnificent, these absolutely amazing expressions in your speech and you'll be, you'll become an advanced English speaker and you'll sound like a native. So that's the key to success. The knowledge of these, you know, amazing expressions and more advanced grammar structures. You know, as I already pointed out, the level C1 is mostly about vocabulary, not grammar. You need to know all this yeah, to reach new heights in English. So, let's move forward. Okay, instead of the word bad, we can use terrible. If you say it's terrible, it's a 1, maybe a 2. It's terrible. Okay, you know this trick. To make it C1, you need to use the word absolutely with strong adjectives. So you say, it's absolutely terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And when you say it, you demonstrate the level C1. Congratulations. Congratulations. Or, for instance, you can say it was disgusting. It means it was so so bad, disgusting, so that you couldn't tolerate it. It was disgusting. So the word disgusting is closer to B2, C1. But it seems to me that it's uh, somewhere, somewhere between these two levels. All right. But you're really serious about having a strong advanced level C1 or C2. So let's do it. I mean, let's make it sound more advanced. We add absolutely. It was absolutely disgusting. Disgusting is a strong adjective. So it was absolutely disgusting. It means it was so, so bad. This word is stronger than terrible. It was absolutely disgusting. It's C1. I find this behavior really disgusting. Not just is disgusting. But I find this behavior really disgusting. So you see another structure here. And I can also just um, try to start using it uh, in a certain context. For example, I've never been treated so unfairly. It was absolutely disgusting. Or it was an absolutely disgusting attitude. So we add some grammar here, which has already been studied yeah, here, I mean, before. I've never been treated so unfairly. So it's passive voice. Passive voice, present, perfect. I've never been treated so unfairly. Good. And you use not just badly, but unfairly. It's also an indicator of this level C1, unfairly. So, yeah, it's really awesome when we add some grammar, more advanced grammar and vocabulary as well. So, in one sentence, 
in one situation. It was absolutely disgusting. Or you can also add some nouns like attitude. It was an absolutely disgusting attitude. It was an absolutely disgusting attitude. It's terrible. A1, A2. It's absolutely terrible. C1. It was disgusting. B2, C1. It was absolutely disgusting. I found this behavior really disgusting. I've never been treated so unfairly. It was absolutely disgusting. It was an absolutely disgusting attitude. You see. Look. The first tip is to get rid of simple words such as very good but important like. So you already looked at it and you know what's all about. But we need to go ahead, certainly. You also need to pay attention to phrasal verbs. It's of great importance. If you're really serious about you know, sounding like an advanced English speaker, like a native speaker, right. For example, note is similar to point out. And you can use this very useful expression. I like to point out that. However, if you use only this expression, it isn't enough to have an advanced level because it's B2. You need to add some advanced vocabulary. Let's look at the second part of the sentence. It's an absolutely breathtaking view. Breathtaking. It means that it takes your breath away. It's so magnificent. It's really amazing. So, and when you start using such words as breathtaking, absolutely, when you start using such expressions as it's an absolutely breathtaking view, it becomes C1. Not surprisingly. I'd like to point out that it's an absolutely breathtaking view. So, the knowledge of phrasal verbs is highly preferable. It's essential. But the knowledge of uh, more advanced vocabulary is completely necessary. Look, understand, it's similar to figure out, and happen, actually, is similar to go on. Look at this sentence. I can figure out what's going on. So, we could have said, I can't understand what's happening, but we replaced understand with figure out. And we also changed happen to going on. So, you see this amazing transformation. I can figure out what's going on. Figure out and go on, so there are two phrasal verbs in such a short sentence, and really, it demonstrates our ability yeah, to use English like an advanced English speaker. You see, I can figure out what's going on at the moment. I can't figure out, instead of I can understand, what's going on at the moment you see instead of happening so we have it here instead of happening what's going on at the moment not just now but at the moment you know you can use these phrasal verbs almost in any situation so that's why i found them extremely useful phrasal verbs note point out I'd like to point out that it's an absolutely breathtaking view. C1. Understand, figure out. Happen, go on. I can figure out what's going on. I can figure out what's going on at the moment. There are two more phrasal verbs especially for you. Look, have an idea or have a solution. If you need to use it uh, in this context, you can, you know, use the phrasal verb come up with come up with. I came up with a very unusual solution to such a complicated task. So you say, I came up with 
instead of I have, you try to use more advanced adjectives, not just a very good, but a very unusual solution to such a complicated task. Remember these expressions, a complicated task or a complicated problem, they are really useful. And the next phrasal verb is a little bit more difficult. Don't on me. Don, don, so long, oh, don, it don't on me, it don't on me. It means that I understood it suddenly. It don't on me. It means I understood suddenly. It don't on me that it was a crucial mistake. We often hear a big mistake, a very big mistake, or a serious mistake. But it isn't about this level C1. So if you need to have this level, use more advanced expressions. For example, a crucial mistake means it was such a serious mistake. It was a very, very serious mistake, a crucial mistake. It don't on me that it was a crucial mistake. And it's C1. Thanks to it dawned on me and a crucial mistake. It dawned on me that it was a crucial mistake. It dawned on me that I'd made a crucial mistake. We also try to use more advanced grammar. You see, the use of past perfect here. Because, you see, first, I made a crucial mistake. And second, it dawned on me. We see the sequence of tenses here. It dawned on me that I'd made a crucial mistake. So it happened before, but we have it in the first part of the sentence, so that's why we need to use past perfect. It dawned on me that I'd made a crucial mistake. So not just two parts, yeah, but there is one more part, there is one more element. So this element is called past perfect, which makes our speech sound um, you know, like C1. It dawned on me that a crucial mistake had been made by him. Look, it dawned on me, all right, that a crucial mistake, good, had been made by him. We complicated it a bit, so not just, um, not simply past perfect, but past perfect passive. Yeah, it's a good sign, I mean, when you can use uh, past perfect passive, it means that you're quite good at grammar, or maybe you're excellent at it, or brilliant at it. It don't mean that a crucial mistake had been made by him. Good. Have an idea, a solution, come up with. I came up with a very unusual solution to such a complicated task. Don't on me. Understood suddenly. It dawned on me that it was a crucial mistake. It dawned on me that I'd made a crucial mistake. It dawned on me that a crucial mistake had been made by him. What else can we add to be more proficient in English? So it's about linger words and spoken phrases. Look, having said that, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the company lacks transparency. Not just as I already said, but you see another level of structure here. Having said that, not just gerund, but it's in the past. So it's in advanced English grammar structure. Having said that, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that it's a really nice phrase, a very nice phrase, the company lacks transparency. Transparency, it means uh, that the company isn't open enough. So we don't know much about the performance of the company or the company's performance. Uh, you see, the company lacks. We can also say there isn't enough transparency, but we also try to use more advanced verbs. So lacks transparency. And it becomes C1. Thanks to having said that, Draw attention, draw your attention to the fact and lacks transparency. Transparency, when the company isn't transparent enough. 
surprisingly enough, they are still living in such intolerable conditions. Look, I can say it's surprising that, but this expression, surprisingly enough, sounds much more advanced. Surprisingly enough. I just need to know this expression and start using it in your speech, surprisingly enough. And then, not just in such bad conditions or poor conditions, but intolerable. It means that they're so, so bad that you can't live here any longer. You can't tolerate it any longer. Surprisingly enough, they are still living in such intolerable conditions. One more great spoken phrase to sound like a native speaker. Generally speaking, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Most people can't really imagine the scale of the problem. Look, generally speaking, that's right, it's a very nice phrase. We also have a, a very interesting expression here. It's just the tip of the iceberg. It means that it's just the top of the iceberg. So we don't really understand how big the problem is. But instead of big, we use the word scale. Scale. Most people can't really imagine the scale of the problem. It means that how big the problem is, how serious the situation is. And so, it's the one, thanks to generally speaking, it's at the tip of the iceberg. I really like this phrase, really. A lot still needs to be done here in this situation. Most people can't really imagine the scale of the problem. The scale maybe of this disaster. Linked words, spoken phrases. Having said that, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the company lacks transparency. Surprisingly enough, they're still living in such intolerable conditions. Generally speaking, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Most people can't really imagine the scale of the problem. You also need to pay attention to more advanced vocabulary. So forget the expression alike and what can we use um, instead of alike. For instance, I get a real kick out of. It means that you enjoy it so much. I get a real kick out of learning a foreign language. It implies that you enjoy it so much. I get a real kick out of learning English. You really like it. I get a real kick out of working out at the gym. We have this expression in the beginning, and we also have a phrasal verb, work out. It means that you do different exercises at the gym. So the expression is work out at the gym, to work out at the gym, or working out at the gym, of doing something. So it's C1, C2. Right. So it isn't only about C1, it's about C1 and C2. When we speak like native speakers and we understand them as well. So you see, I get a real kick out of. It's also possible to say it without real. I get a kick out of learning a foreign language. When you have the word real, it sounds stronger. That's it. Okay, one more interesting situation. There is one more interesting situation. Not surprisingly, I thoroughly enjoy learning English here since it changed my life profoundly. And it does help me reach new heights in terms of my career and personal development as well. You see, not surprisingly. So, it's a very interesting spoken phrase. So, it's you one. Not just I enjoy, but I thoroughly enjoy. It means that you enjoy it so much. I enjoy it so much. I thoroughly enjoy. Remember this phrase because so many people say, I like, I like, I like. You can say, I thoroughly enjoy. I thoroughly enjoy. And it sounds great. That sounds great. That's amazing. I thoroughly enjoy learning English here. Since, you can say because, but since is similar to because. That's, it's another way of saying it. Here, since, it's changed my life profoundly. Profoundly means greatly. We see that there is a connection with the present, so that's why we are using 
present perfect here. It's changed. It means it has changed my life profoundly. And it does help me. Inversion. We see an inversion here. It really helps me or it does help me reach new heights. You can say help me to reach, but it isn't necessary. We mostly, native speakers mostly say without to help me reach new heights in terms of in terms of means concerning or related to my career and personal development as well. As well means to, like also or to, we actually put it in the end, it's like to, as well. It's as well means like to, also, you see. So not surprisingly, I thoroughly enjoy learning English here since it changed my life profoundly and it does help me reach new heights in terms of my career and personal development as well. That's all right, but what can we say about grammar? How important is it in terms of our way to fluency in English? Right. Is it important or unimportant? So if we mostly focus on vocabulary, it doesn't mean that it's unimportant. It's of great importance as well. And let me give you some very useful examples. Being a very prolific writer, he churns out a numerous number of various articles yearly. So we can see the use of gerund here. Being means that he or she is a very prolific writer. Prolific means that he or she writes so many books or articles. So that's really, it's so surprising, it's amazing. So we're shocked by all this. Prolific. He churns out well, and if you're really serious about having an advanced level of English, you need to use as many phrasal verbs as possible. Churn out, churn out means to produce. Produces or churns out a numerous number, not just a great number or a big number, but a numerous number. A numerous number of various articles yearly. Most students say different, but we can also use various. It has a similar meaning of various articles yearly. So we see more advanced grammar here thanks to been, and we can also see more advanced vocabulary. Being a very prolific writer, he churns out a numerous number of various articles yearly. That's the most brilliant idea I've ever heard. Well, if you know present perfect, let's try to use it. Don't forget about the grammar you already started. Look, that's the most, so it's a superlative form, and then we use present perfect after that. That's the most brilliant idea I've ever heard, or that's the most effective course I've ever come across. That's what I'm talking about. So try to use some grammar, you know, more advanced grammar, and also try to use phrasal verbs, as many phrasal verbs as possible. You know, really, that's the key to success. Like here, you, you know, churn out, to churn out, to come across. That's the most brilliant idea. So what can we do here to sound even more advanced? I've ever heard or maybe I've ever come up with, come up with, I've ever come up with. It's also possible you are talking, so our ideas I've ever come up with. So fragile verbs should be almost everywhere. If you're really serious about sounding like an advanced English speaker, why not? Or a native speaker. So grammar. Uh, being a very prolific writer, he churns out a numerous number of various articles yearly. That's the most brilliant idea I've ever heard. That's the most effective course I've ever come across. Not just I've ever met or I've ever seen, but come across. We've just talked about this structure I've ever done something. For example, I've ever experienced, but we can add some more, more spoken phrases, more collocations, more phrasal verbs, so more grammar. Let's try to do it. For example, to be perfectly honest, 
that's the most pleasant feeling I've ever experienced. To put it another way, it's an unforgettable feeling when you do your best, working incredibly hard, and this hard work does pay off and bear fruit in the end. You see, to be perfectly honest, not just to be honest, to be frank, but to be perfectly honest, C1. That's the most pleasant feeling I've ever experienced. Not just I've ever had, but I've ever experienced. To put it another way, it means in other words, in other words, it's, of course we can say it's a good feeling, or we can't forget this feeling, but it's an unforgettable feeling. When you do your best, it means when you do everything possible, when you try really hard, then we see the use of gerund working. Not simply hard, but incredibly hard. Incredibly hard. And this hard work does pay off. We see this fretal verb at last. It's very important to use as many fretal verbs as possible. Does pay off, it means does have a result. And we also have the use the use of inversion here. Does pay off. We can say hard work really pays off or does pay off. So has a great result and bear fruit. So we have just um, a great result in the end. It's an example of C1, C2. To be perfectly honest, that's the most pleasant feeling I've ever experienced. To put it another way, it's an unforgettable feeling when you do your best working incredibly hard and this hard work does pay off and bear fruit in the end. So we see more advanced grammar. I've ever experienced does pay off working incredibly hard. We see a phrasal verb pay off. We see more advanced um, spoken phrases which we usually put in the beginning, we also call them linking words. To be perfectly honest, to put it another way. Good. We also see more advanced expressions. Experienced, unforgettable, do your best, incredibly, bear fruit. That's amazing. My friends, last but not least, as you might have already guessed, looking at your titanic efforts, diligence and perseverance, I expect a gigantic progress from you, so I look forward to a success which might happen overnight. Never give up. Cheer up, my friends. So we see this very useful expression. Last but not least. It means that we are talking about it in the end, but it doesn't mean that it's unimportant. On the contrary, it's really important. As you might have already guessed. So present perfect with might. Great. Yeah. That's amazing. It's really unbelievable. That's fantastic. Looking at your titanic efforts. Looking. We see the use of gerund here. Looking. Great. Not just at your great efforts, but at your titanic efforts. So really unbelievable efforts. So we admire these efforts. Titanic efforts. Diligence. You're so hard working indeed. You're so hard working indeed, right? And perseverance. I can also say persistence or perseverance. I expect a gigantic progress. So great progress. We've normally seen Actually, this expression with a, that's why we also use a, a gigantic progress. I expect a gigantic progress. So we need to memorize it from you. So I look forward to your success. I mean that we're waiting for it with impatience, which might happen overnight, suddenly or unexpectedly. Never give up. Really, never give up. Believe in yourself. Cheer up, my friends. Last but not least, 
As you might have already guessed, looking at your titanic efforts, diligence and perseverance, I expect a gigantic progress from you, so I look forward to your success, which might happen overnight. Never give up. Last but not least, as you might have already guessed, looking at your titanic efforts, diligence and perseverance, I expect a gigantic progress from you. So I look forward to a success which might happen overnight. Never give up. Cheer up, my friends. It isn't the end. It's just the beginning of this course and of your success. Yeah, of your story. Write something about your story. You know, it would be fantastic.